kind of stuff he's really trying to target. He's got this quest warrior. Well, let's get into the game. Ants playing right. the Silence Priest against a mage. I, I want to say Priest, extremely favored. Extremely favored. All right, let's see what kind of tech cards the mage has. Is there a polymorph? No. Is there a meteor? No. Oh, the, that's a bummer. Yeah. So there, the priest can play big minions, and then whenever the mage tries to freeze them to stop them from killing him. What the, what the priest will do is silence the minion, removing the freeze, buff its health to a billion, then inner fire it and kill him. Yep, that sounds pretty strong. Yeah, it usually lines up very well. Yeah, so Primordial Glyph can be a key card for the mage. If you find like meteors and polymorphs, that can help you deal with the big minions from priest. There's mm -hmm. polymorph. That's fantastic for sure. Being able to remove big minions is important, but what the priest player should be doing, what Ant should be doing, is trying to wait on making any of his minions large to be able to play around glyph cards like the polymorph and such like that, even though they're not really... And so that he can silence it if it's frozen without removing the buffs that are already on it. Yeah, so you, you want to silence it immediately so it can start attacking for four kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, he needs to deal with this Doomsayer, so attacking for four is not enough. You could start this turn by drawing a card, like bump your Norsher Cleric into something and heal. You bump your you could. Cleric into the Archaeologist and draw a card. He's going for Shadow Visions. He's thinking if he finds... He could Inner Fire with Silence on your Razor Leaf to deal with the Doomsayer. I don't like dealing with the Doomsayer. If you just silence the Doomsayer and wait around long enough, eventually you kill him with it. Could you potion of madness, divine spirit, and fire it? So this potion can kill the Doomsayer. You potion the Archaeologist and attack your stuff into the Doomsayer. You get to use silent. The advantage to if there were an inner fire, I kind of like it because you get to use the silence on your minion instead of his. So you get that razor leaf attacking right away. You're like up a card there. Yeah, does it? It, it is. Part of the advantage but i also just like having the doomsayer in play i think it benefits you to have an 07 on your opponent's side and this when was you run double potion of madness in your deck this was also a slight misstep from ant uh he attacked into the doomsayer and then healed it he could have attacked into the arcanologist and then healed his own minion and the difference would be just one free damage on uh the arcanologist yeah which is yeah. not very important at all here but you know better is better right Better is definitely better. I I don't know how to argue with that. That's yeah. just good is good, great is great. You're going to want to do one damage to your opponent's thing. Yeah. It's not like he's going to battle rage. I, I would hope not. That would be sneaky. All right. So for Kei Kwong, he's playing some Mana Worms and an Ice Block. He's just kind of playing stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Creating a giant board position. There's not really any way for Anta AoE clear this, so it seems good to extend a lot of minions really wide. He wants to try and pressure Ant into situations where he feels like he needs to start uh, silencing his minions early and fighting for the board. Yeah, and Ant draws Lyra, which will be good later, but right now what he needed was to silence. His Razor Leaf in play can't attack. There's another one in his hand that also can't attack. So he's drawing a card off Powered Shield. You'd like to find a silence. The girl's also quite nice here. Again, you can play the girl, bump the Tar Creeper or the Norsha Cleric into a minion, then heal his guy, drawing two cards. That's quite beautiful. He's thinking, do I want to use an inner fire here? Um, it's pretty appealing. There's another one still in the deck. You, you typically play two inner fires, so um, you only need one per game, so it's okay to waste one here to kind of kill off a Mana Worm or start pushing damage. Okay. I can see. I mean, you get a 7-7 seven, seven out there, which isn't bad. And since you're drawing so many cards, you'll start finding your other resources. You could actually... Okay, this makes... He is just going to punch him. He's making it real big. He's risking that Glyph card being a Polymorph for a Meteor. Yeah. Risking it for the Biscuit. He misses two draws off North Shore Cleric in order to make this big aggressive I... push. Not the biggest fan of this play. I feel like if you try and go for the consistency route and just draw your deck, you'll find a way to get there at the end of the day. Maybe pushing this damage doesn't seem like the most relevant thing. You do know there's an ice block, huh? Well, it's better to pop them at lower life totals. If you pop them at 30 or whatever, they can kind of sometimes deal with your minion and 
the damage you push isn't relevant. But I agree. I think missing the two draws from the Nurture Clerics is pretty painful. Like, of course, with just... Caster Vision C and the Polymorph, it's easy to criticize, but it does seem like taking the two draws there was really good. Yeah. He, he's drawing to... is a combo deck. Yeah. So Kick Wong is thinking about uh, Potion of Madness here. It's already really strong running an Arcanologist into a Mana Worm, but if he plays Acolyte of Pain, uh, then the opponent can kind of steal the card draw from you. So that's yeah, maybe why he wanted to pay instead of playing Acolyte. And I like that. Your opponent's starting to run out of cards. They're starting to really fizzle out, so don't give them more opportunities to draw. It makes a lot of sense. Both Clerics are gone, which is the entire draw engine of the deck. And so if you could just, like hold them off from drawing cards, it's going to be very difficult for Ant to assemble Lyra combos. It's going to be very difficult for him to assemble the Inner Fire combo number two. You might have to fire off Lyra here, because you kind of have to play Silence this turn, and so you're not going to have like more spells for Lyra in the future. The mm -hmm. alternative to Lyra is to Silence the Minion, I think Talon Priest it as well, trade it and heal it. Because you're not that close to killing the opponent, and you want to get value off of your hero power. I think he trades a Man Worm here and heals the Razor Leaf. I like this play from Ant. Mm -hmm. Kind of dealing with that board, getting value out of the Talent Priest, getting value out of the... Oh, not looking for value out of the Hero Power. Man, he is us enough. the most aggressive combo Priest player I have ever seen. He's just really focused on playing all of his cards as fast as possible. I think the deck... Um, can be played a little more patiently. I think card draw should be valued a lot higher when playing the Silence Priest. Yeah, and now when the Flame Strike comes off, because he didn't heal, this Arcanologist gets to live. If Ant had healed instead of playing that Razor Leaf, he would have a 4 8 Razor Leaf in hand and the Arcanologist would be dead, which is. Uh, yeah, and better. if he had taken the draws earlier, he starts assembling the Lyra plus Radiant Elemental plus stuff. Yep. kind of hand, which can cause a lot of grief for the priests and give you essentially a lot of healing. Like, when you get, like, Lyra Radiant Elemental with, like, a couple spells in hand and 10 mana, you do find healing very, very often and can outlast the burn, even, of the the mage opponent. I found myself, as a Silence Police player, uh, not even killing the mage, just sitting there doing a bunch of crazy Lyra shenanigans and, um, you know, finding a greater healing potion or just a couple of the the new healing card, not flash heal, but uh, what's it called? Binding, Binding heal. heal. Yeah. Yeah, to just be able to stay out of range forever. Now, in Ant's defense, looking at Kei Kwong's hand with the Alex Draws, the Pyroblast, the Firelands Portal, if Ant didn't pressure Kei Kwong at all, uh, Kei Kwong would likely be able to burn through the healing generated by Lyra with, you know, Alex draws into burn game plan. But I think I think what you're saying is right. When you when you manage to find the right mix of pressuring the mage to cause them to use resource defensively and value plays so that you don't run out of resources yourself, that's kind of how the priest wins the matchup, right? Right, right. When he had that situation with the Tar Creeper and the two Northshire clerics behind, uh, K Kwong couldn't kill the Tar Creeper if it was not buffed because he couldn't commit the polymorph to removing the tar creeper because he needed to save that for all of the buffs. So Ant buffing the tar creeper allowed Kei Kwong to polymorph it, which allowed him to kill off his draw engine. The draw engine, I believe, is pressure enough. I don't think you need the stats in play, just the threat of the infinite card potential to set up for the Lyra combos. That's one of the ways you can win this matchup is just finding healing off Lyra and setting up a good Lyra turn, and card draw is going to do that every time. So... I, I don't like the idea of throwing out both of those win conditions at the same time and not really fully utilizing either of them. Now look at this. This is a really tense moment. Ant runs out Lyra getting zero value off of it, and Kei Kwong just leaves it up. Um, because he doesn't have a good answer in hand, he'd have to go fishing with the Arcan Intellect, which ris risks uh, not finding an answer to Lyra and not developing mm -hmm. the Alexstrasza. So instead he just goes with the uh, the tempo line of 8-8 eight, eight plus 14U. That's a pretty good card. <laughs> But uh, Ant, unfortunately for him, does not pick up a spell, so he can't capitalize on the the rewards of his risk. Yeah, it's, uh, the Acolyte's a real bummer there for Ant. Uh, any spell with a Radiant Elemental and Lyra, he could really do a lot of shenanigans this turn, but instead he appears to be fairly dead, as he's now trading Lyra into a 5-1, having gotten zero value out of it, and an 8-8 Elekstraza is attacking his face. It's literally just lethal with Pyroblast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, game one to Kekwong, winning an unfavorable, arguably uh, based 
arguably because of the decisions made by Ant. Yeah, I think he took a, a really risky line for the matchup. And, you know, you can say, oh, okay, Kwong just got lucky. He got the glyph, or glyph into polymorph. But at the end of the day, I don't think RNG decided that game. Yeah, you think he could have played it, around it a little bit better. I think he could have played around it a little bit better. I think RNG helped, but mm-hmm. I don't think it decided the game. I think that was a very winnable game from Ant still. I mean, when it comes to the topic of deciding a game, this is kind of something I like to rant about. People say, oh, this decided the game or that decided the game. Uh, in my view, the reality is many factors contribute to the outcome of a game. And so you can say that the polymorph decided the game. You can also say that a top deck decided the game. Like, all of these things had to happen for the game to go the way that it did. And mm-hmm. uh, when you say one thing decided the game, it's important to not forget all the other factors that went into it, which is just agreeing with what you what you were saying about how even though the polymorph RNG decided the game, it's the polymorph RNG plus the decisions that were made. Right. I think uh, there's a lot of different ways that game could have pl- panned out. I think um, maybe Ant doesn't really uh, see the matchup the same as I do. I think the Priest can win in the late game, which um, it seems kind of odd because there's no Priest to the Feast, but uh, just the amount of heal you can make off Lyra. If you have 10 cards in your hand, Lyra Radiant Elemental, and you're on 10 mana, you generally heal a lot. <laughs> Look at those cute <laughs> because, little polar bear babies. They're so adorable. It's, yeah, they're only in the commercial for half a second. That's kind of a bummer. I missed it. Yeah, yeah, he's smiling because he liked it. He's like, "Damn, those polar bears are cute." Murderous. Polar bears do generally make you smile. Yes. Aren't they like one of the most murderous bears? Right? I don't really. Oh, know they're too many they're facts definitely bears, the most yeah. murderous. They're I believe they're the biggest and they're very murderous. They'll chase you. Yeah, I saw a video of a, a polar bear chasing a dude around a car. They were doing kind of a ring around the rosy <laughs> thing. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, are they playing, like, the Benny Hill theme? Well, I, I think the human was playing, like, hey, I want to live, and the polar bear was thinking, like, hey, I want a meal. I, I don't know if there's any music to the video, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Dude was just kind of running around a car to save his life, and they'd kind of, like, pause and, you know, change directions and all that kind of stuff. It was cool. Polar I think if I were bears. a polar bear, I would have gotten on the car and eaten that dude, but... Right. Not, I guess, the most intelligent creature, but, you know, don't tell him I said that. Because... Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They are huge in size and weight, making them the largest living carnivores on Earth. Boom. Um, for like you know, if, land, they're, they're, there's definitely orcas are bigger in the sea. Those are carnivores. Well, I, I don't know, this is from National Geographic. So by Earth, I think they mean land. I don't know. I guess the sea isn't considered Earth by their standards. Interesting. I don't know. All right, fair enough. I mean, well, I mean, so uh, if if people don't enjoy the broadcast, at least they learned something. So you can always <laughs> walk away with a smile on your face. And if that didn't put a smile on your face, buy a Chevy. Buy a Chevy. That'll put a smile on your face. You'll see polar bears and wild horses. There you go. Good stuff. We can yeah. drive out of a dust storm. Good to go. Did you know polar bears or female polar bears give birth to their cubs in little snow dens? That's cute. Yes, yeah, so they make little houses, give birth to the cubs, and then the cubs kind of chill out in the little houses for um, four to five months. They stay indoors. Mm-hmm. So they get uh, birthed in a house, hang out, play video games inside for four or five months, and then have to get a, grow up, get a job, go out in the real world. They're kind of like us. That's a rough life to only get four to five months of video games. I, I prefer yeah. the lifetime route. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. We, we get kind of lucky with that, huh? Yeah, we, we lucked out a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes fortunate. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so Ant's down a game here. Come on, you're representing America, Ant. Do it for Team USA. Pick up some W's. For so, Team USA. Yeah, we got to try and take down China. We, we had Team Europe, a.k.a. Wonder... Uh, lose to the Chinese representative. So we're losing ground for the uh, the Western nations at the moment. So hopefully Ant can kind of pick it back up here. Yeah, China's, I think, getting revenge for the Shanghai event where uh, they just really performed abysmally. There was actually some Well, some you see drama. the controversy on yeah, that. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up about how apparently they were not informed of the format in a reasonable time frame. The other uh, regions 
knew about what the format would be like a week in advance and the Chinese mm-hmm. players found out like a day in advance there was something different than what they had previously been told so they didn't get adequate time to prepare and it, it really showed up in their results I think they had like a one and eight record when I saw pretty bad okay. so the screenshot that we have for this guy's deck list is Jade Druid and the one they showed on screen is Agro Druid I'm going to trust the screen okay because the you weren't sure if that was his name, so you might have been looking at the wrong guy's deck list. Just happened to match up classes. Yeah, there's no name for this deck list. It's just a URL. This looks like a token druid based on the Direwolf Alpha. Yeah, Direwolf Alpha screams token druid. Token druid versus the uh, Silence Priest. Who do you think's favorite? I think I would rather be the token druid. I think. Depends quite a bit on the early game draws and how all that pans out. This Ancient Washer is working in Ant's favor. If he could pick up a Silence to go with it, he might become favored all of a sudden. But uh, a a lot of the matchup is how efficiently can Token Druid develop a board while playing around Potion of Madness. Because Mm -hmm. if you play into Potion of Madness, things are probably going south. Uh, Yeah, one of the big things to note about the uh, Silence Priest deck is that there are no AoE clears in the deck, so Living Mana is pretty good when there's no AoE clears, yep. as well as the fact that um, there's no Shadowward Pains in Silence Priest or Shadowward Deaths. So things like the, uh, an early Hydra can just kind of kill them right off the bat, and things like Innervate Fledgling just kind of instantly kill them. So there's a lot of ways that Kukwong can just really run away with a game out of nowhere. Yeah, that said, Kukwong's hand is a little bit awkward to start off. He's got an Innervate with nothing good to play off of it. He's got a couple of 1-mana one 1-2 one, beasts that don't have any relevant battle cry. And he's got a late game card in his opening hand. So the hand doesn't quite come together, but all it takes is one good card drawn to play with that Innervate, and the hand becomes fairly beautiful. If he draws a big minion to go with the Innervate, or some kind of AoE buff card to pair with all these little minions... And that's a lot of his deck falls in those categories. Innervate is probably the worst possible card he could draw here. Because he already had an Innervate that wasn't doing anything for him. Now he's got two. Mm-hmm. So if, if Ant picks up a Silence here to pair with the Ancient Watcher, and there's a Purify, it's not nearly as good as Silence, because Silence would allow him to Talon Priest as well next turn while attacking. Ooh, that's a good pickup. That's a great pickup. Marquee of Charge, excellent. Now he just needs to get, like, Hydra. Another one. Vate that That's out every good. time. Wow. Take this value trade on the Ancient Watcher before anything funky happens. If you don't value trade, you risk Ant silencing your Hungry Crab. Mm-hmm. And you do not play Galaka Crawler because you do not want to get Potion to Madness even in the slightest. Yeah, not, not even a little bit. Yeah, not even halfway. You could coin Hungry right. Crab, but you could just play the Hungry Crab next turn and save the coin. There's not too much upside to playing it now. So we don't have Kikwong's deck list, right? We don't know like what his five drop slot looks like. Usually it's two living manas. Oh, this is a Going huge risk. It. It's not just the two Potion of Madness. It's also two Shadow Visions for Potion of Madness. Right, so four cards could potentially blow him out of the water. You're... None of them found, though. That's a complete lack of justice. This was a yeah, huge I, misplay from K. Kwong. This is big. This is real bad. You don't do that. I, he wants to be able to contest the 4-8. That's his logic, right? So he's taking the risk around a Potion of Madness so that if um, uh, Humongous Razor Leaf comes out, he can double trade Hero Power it, I guess. But why would you want to double trade Hero Power a Humongous Razor Leaf? That's like not a good play. So I... I don't like it. Yeah, it's upsetting. I think it like, opens maybe, you up to a blowout. And there's four of the other card and only two Humongous Ro- Razor Leafs. So it's, it's not just four. Not... It's more like three or three and a half. Because okay. the Shadow Visions doesn't always find Potion of Madness. It, it has a decent fail rate. It always finds its delay. Okay. When they need it, it always gets well, it. Well, he needed it. Yeah, he's always going to get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, in in defense of Kikwong's play there, where he played into Potion Madness, he was looking at his hand, he was thinking, I'm going to have to play into this Potion Madness next turn, I might as well do it now. Maybe that's a reasonable line of thinking. Well, you get to trade off the 5-2 into something good. I mean, the advantage to not playing into it immediately is that you potentially top deck something like Power of the Wild, Mark of the Lotus, that allows you to play around it. Yeah. So here he could coin Living Mana to set up for a humongous Power of the Wild in two turns. 
This is where Potion of Madness, again, is pretty good. Like, it doesn't really get amped back into it. But if you Potion of Madness, one of those tutus from Living Mana, you get to uh, keep the Mana Crystal from your opponent. So you get mm -hmm. that Mana Crystal, and they will never get it back. Yeah, ramp into some hot Lyra action. Uh-huh. So, Ant's looking at this board and thinking, man, I wish I had Dragonfire Potion in my deck. But it's just not a good card in Silence Priest. That's why it doesn't run it. It would be good in this circumstance, but there's too many other circumstances where it just does not contribute at all to the game plan of playing stuff and killing the opponent with it. Yeah, but you have to imagine in this scenario, he's going to be looking for that Potion of Madness, start getting that ramp, ramp into maybe like a Lyra plus um, Divine stuff. Spirit next turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. He's going for the Lyra now. He's okay. going to silence so that his opponent can never get the Mana Crystal off of that 2-2. Chaining it into a Wisp. It draws Holy Fire. Not what he wanted. He was looking for an AoE, like Holy Nova, Dragonfire Potion type stuff. And yeah, exactly. on the flip side, Kei rips Mark of the Lotus. Best possible draw by by a mile. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to want to play that one. Yeah, so he's got, uh, what is this? 7 times 3 is 21, so he's got 20 damage. 5 off lethal. Probably kill that Lyra before it does anything nasty. And ignore the wisp, push the rest faced. Well, if he's well, trading he with the value 3 4 kill the yeah. wisp. Yeah, now you gotta kill the wisp. I was gonna trade off a 3 3 that gives me a mana crystal instead of value trading. I, I just like pushing face damage. And I like having the higher health minion still alive in case that's somehow relevant. It doesn't matter. I think Kikwong's line just wins, so I, I shouldn't criticize. He's got zero well, potion, potion of madness mass. is dead. Yeah. Uh, holy fire. Not good does enough. Not keep a minute. Oh man, looks like Kwong is kind of an ant eater. <laughs> it does usually have larger noses, I believe. His doesn't quite. No, he doesn't have an ant eater nose. No. It'd, it'd be right. better under those circumstances. Well, this does keep Ant alive for now. Maybe he can come back into it with the power of the Holy Fire. I mean, the power of the Wild is pretty good. He is down to 1 HP. I think this is uh, just lethal. Oh, he just doesn't hear power. You're right, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All of his minions stay alive, and he, he continues doing what he's doing. Giving Ant no possible outs. Giving Ant... The business. Lots of business. Not any of the business that he wants, though. No. Well played. So, 2-0 lead for Kei Kwong over Ant. Mm -hmm. And his potential last deck is um, Token Shaman, which uh, also does pretty good against Silence Priest. Yeah, I think, actually, the rise of Token Shaman directly led to a dramatic reduction of Silence Priest in the metagame. It was kind of like a popping up pretty often kind of thing, and then Token Shaman developed as a deck, and people were like, wow, I don't want to play these uh, can't-attack minions into their devolves. It just doesn't work well, right? Like when you power shield Divine right. Spirit up, you put a bunch of buffs on a minion, and they devolve it, you lose. <laughs> devolve is just have... good against minion buffs. Yeah, exactly. And you, you have no AoE, and their entire deck is Board Floods and Bloodlust, so that doesn't end up working out well for you often. Right. I mean, the only real thing in the in the Priest's favor is that Potion of Madness is a nice tool, but a lot of times the Token Shaman can play around it to a reasonable extent. I don't know. Kwong was kind of slipping on playing around Potion of Madness last game. If he finds himself disrespecting it as the series continues, maybe Ant can sneak a win in there. Probably not. It really doesn't punish you that hard in Token Shaman. Like, you lose some 1-1s one or something. It's not like a 2-3 is trading into a 5-2 almost ever. Yeah, I guess so. Alright, maybe I can unmute for this. He's probably speaking English. Yeah. I don't think Ant knows much Chinese. I'm not totally sure, though. Yeah, no, I'm unmuting for him. I really want to see what the Death more of like the Death Knight class. It looks really interesting. But with such little cards, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to tell what's going to come, but I, I'm really hopeful that the next expansion is going to be pretty good. All right, really hopeful that the next expansion is going to be pretty good. What do you think about the next expansion thus far? 
Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of it. I saw a Hunter Legendary where you kind of transform. It's like it consecrates and you gain five armor and it changes your hero power from steady shot into something that generates value. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a card that you, I can't really evaluate the strength of it on its own. It's a piece of a puzzle and it depends on like how the other puzzle pieces come along with it. Like Currently that card's useless, but if it finds the right support cards, maybe there's some kind of sweet Control Hunter deck with it. Yeah, I don't think it's actually all that useless. I feel like two damage across the board is really good. It doesn't go face, right? It's just two to their minions? It's just two to their minions. But like doing that and gaining five life for six mana by itself is not that bad I thought it was five mana. Card. It's six mana, which makes it a little uh, worse. A lot worse. Okay, but it also changes the hero power, which maybe that's great. Maybe that's terrible. Depends on what your have game you, plan is. Have you tried the beast simulator thing on Hearthpone yet? I haven't. How do you feel about it? Um, every time you combine Stone Tusk Boar with anything, it's good. It's really nutty. <laughs> yeah. What and are the odds? A lot of poison things. Not good. Not good. There's a lot of beasts. Okay, but, so looking uh, at the hands, strong hands on both sides. Uh, Kei Kuang has one drop into Totem, and Ant has Coin Ancient Watcher into Purify. Okay. okay. Into Humongous Razor Leaf into Shadow Visions for another Silence on it. So both players very happy about what they're doing. I think Ant's hand is like lines up better in the circumstance because the ancient watcher is just going to eat that primal fin totem yeah that's uh very favorable to be able to do that get it out before it starts generating value and really flooding the board okay kong leads with blood seal corsair he doesn't want to risk drawing patches and he does want to have one extra power in play immediately mm -hmm. it's just all upside compared to firefly yeah yeah don't have to worry about too many things Oh, the Volve's interesting. Volve is pretty good. Yeah. I would not mind just um, evolving next turn. Yeah, he could just uh, make some one drops this turn and next turn do some kind of like hero power evolve turn. Because well, even this adds minions to the field, right? Because now your opponent's going to kill the totem and you have three minions left over and then you play the one drops next turn plus evolve. You get a five minion evolve going on. Okay. That's not bad against a deck with no AoE. Oh man, Devolve is... And then you have to Devolve to follow up. It's such a six card against Silence Priest. It just really oh. disrupts their game plan. I'm evolving here 100% of the time, and so is Kei Kwong. Look at him, he's already got a queued up. And Boom. Got a Blue Guild Warrior, too. Push that, too. A good trick when you're playing a card like Evolve is to look at the end turn button. If it's yellow, that means there's still game actions you can take, such as attack with your charger. If it's green, you can safely click it and know that you're not missing any opportunities. All right, save those crucial seconds so you can begin thinking about... So once again, things. Potion of Madness, excellent here for Ant. You can take the Huckster, kill off two of Kei Kuang's minions, and draw a card, and deny Kei Kuang a card draw from the Huckster. But he doesn't have it, again. You could <laughs> Shadow Visions for it. A bummer for him. If he Is doesn't find, yeah. If you don't find the potion of madness, you find a silence to go with your can't attack minions in hand. Yeah, but they're not developed on the board. That's so slow. Not oh. finding it here is really backbreaking. Yeah, you, you wanted to find it. I I was thinking maybe we just play the razor leaf, and then next turn you go for the shadow visions because then if you hit a silence effect, it's actually good, you know. All right. So okay, Kong. Pushing eight, probably just wants to go wide on the board this turn. You don't really need to devolve, you just need to have the widest possible board for Bloodlust Lethals next turn. And it gets attack with no AoE. Bloodlust is really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like Ant's deck does a poor job of interacting with Kei Kuang's deck, and Kei Kuang's deck does a good job of interacting with Ant's deck, so it's all kind of stacked in the Token Shaman's favor over Silence Priest. So, is there any way Ant can stay alive? You can go North Shire Cleric Heal, dig for Potion of Madness. Try and stay alive. If Potion kills off two guys, there's still 5 plus 12, 17 damage, so that doesn't work. Well, you kill off the Huckster, you take control of that, and then that gives you something shaman like uh, 0 mana gain taunt and heal to full health. Okay. Okay. And then you're... Then you're so in the you clear. To, yeah, you just needed to draw a potion of madness, take the huckster, kill it into a <laughs> ancestor. <laughs> yeah. it's, all, it's almost too easy. 
It's almost too easy. It's I make that play all the time. Now, a good spot on the line though, Firebat. I appreciate that. It's why world champion. Mm-hmm. You gotta fi- figure out how to dig your way out of these holes. Mm-hmm. I play priest a lot, so get in a lot of holes. You get in a lot of holes. <laughs> your cards are generally worse than your opponents. Yeah. And boom, quick three zero lead, three zero victory for K Kwan. All of the losses are on the Silence Priest, not pulling its weight. It was a deck that was around in the metagame, very popular about a month and a half ago. Lost popularity due to the really rise of Token Shaman and Token Druid, which are two of the decks in K. Kwan's lineup. So it makes sense that he's finding himself having success against the Silence Priest. Sure. Uh, One of the arguments... 